Yeah, so I want to talk about uh, mobile learning and, and what we're doing in that space and what we're seeing and some of the things that, that are coming up. I'm hoping that's going to be pretty relevant to you folks. And if not, I'll enjoy the, the tea, coffee and, and, and cakes and biscuits. So really, you know, from a statistic perspective, over 5 billion of us have um, a mobile phone or a mobile device of some sort, 7.6 billion people. So um, mobile is not getting any smaller and more and more and more in organisations and in our personal life, we're using this to access content, to do our banking, social media, Googling things. It's almost like an, uh, an augmented intelligence machine. If we get stuck on something, we just Google it and we find the answer, right? So, so supporting us both on the job, but also in our social lives. And this is growing. So more and more uh, mobile share of internet time has been rapidly growing over the years. So people using mobiles more and more. And in this statistic here, we will be using our mobile more than our desktop to access internet content. And therefore, one would imagine we might be using our mobile more to access learning and to be supported on the job accessing learning. We saw this trend a while ago and, um, and we thought, well, that's kind of cool and what could we do in this space? So our first mobile learning opportunity was with Kmart in Australia about two or three years ago. It had 150,000 users that they need to have trained and they thought, hey, we'll do this for their phones and for their tablet devices. We thought, hey, that sounds really, really cool. We're, we welcome that opportunity. So we explored Captivate and we explored uh, articulate rides. And unfortunately, the things that, the, or should I say, the software and what they said on the can, they didn't quite deliver on. Um, so we're a little stuck, right? Because we'd promised, came up that we'd develop a bunch of stuff for them. And in Spy Group's way, we always keep our promise. So we decided that we would um, create a framework to build all that learning for them, which we did. And that framework evolved from our authoring framework into Chameleon V1, version one. And then about a year ago, the developer guys, Todd and a couple of developers thought um, that we should completely redesign V1 and build V2. And this always makes me nervous, right? Because it's time and money and developers always say, oh, the tech's old because it's a year old and we're going to create some new stuff. But we did. And, and we ventured forward with V2. It was delivered May 21 of this year. So it was actually on time, unusual and under budget, fascinatingly <laughs> unusual. So, so well done, Todd and the guys for for taking a lead on Chameleon. You see this module here that we created for, uh, for Telstra as an example of what we do in Chameleon. So what we're finding in our market, and I just want to really bring it specifically to New Zealand, Australia, and to a, to, to a lesser degree, Southeast Asia, because we don't have as many clients there, but we still have clients there where we're developing mobile learning, is they want devi device diversity. So regardless of what we're building in the digital world, they want this to work on all devices with no compromises, yeah? And this is really the point here. So no compromises, they want the same great learning experience, engaging learning experience um, that they would get on the PC, on the tablet or on the phone. So it creates some interesting challenges, right? Now this is um, what we're finding too in New Zealand, we've been a little slower. We've been a little slower on the uptake in terms of moving towards our, our mobile learning world. Um, Australia, 70, this, these are our customers, right? So we're pr in any given year, we'd probably work with maybe 200 unique organisations. Um, in Australia, um, far more um, mobile first thinking than New Zealand at the moment. And I'm not 100% sure why, but we're going to explore some barriers a little later today. Southeast Asia, smaller sample size, however, almost without exception, mobile first almost without exception. There seems to be a greater um, tendency to consume content on the mobile there. Seems to be a greater. New Zealand less so, but increasing. Less so, but increasing. I would like to, I would like for this line here, obviously, to, to move forward over the next year or two. So I guess the question is what's driving adoption? So I've been talking to our our good learning partners. So one of the key things that we're finding is future-proofing. So some of our clients are saying, look, we don't have a full mobility suite for our workers yet. Um, we're not paying data so they can use their phones to access this, this learning in their own time or necessarily while they're you know, in public transport. 
but in a couple of years time they will so if you can build this now so it's going to save us rebuilding it that's fantastic in spy group so future future proofing is a big one also you know the, in the world of lms and uh, i know pretty much everyone has an lms and i know pretty much everyone loves their lms maybe maybe not um, some of those LMSs, the front door to the learning, aren't doing themselves a lot of favours. So the LMS is not really mobile ready, if you like, right? So that front door is going to be a bit of a challenge for learners to access. Organisations are saying, hey, look, in a couple of years' time, we might not have that LMS anymore. That's OK. But we want to make sure that what's being built behind it, when we do have a more mobile ready LMS, is going to be ready to rock and roll. So again, future proofing. So both in terms of the mobility, data and access, but also the LMS. Another one is access. So organizations are all saying, look, our LMS is not really doing it for us, Inspire Group. Can you host this somewhere else? So, hey, coffee. So we can access that directly. Sure. So access, but also access back on the job. So whether it be um, learning or sometimes performance support, so many of our organisations, I, I won't show you Laminex today, but Laminex in Australia, essentially we've created performance support for them so they can have sales collateral on their phones and their pockets so when they're on the shop floor, they can talk to clients about things. So it's kind of like online brochure wear, right? Is it learning? Mm, not so much, but it is definitely performance support. So we're seeing this continuum between learning and performance support, you know, our, our um, Inspiring to Lead programs, right? So Inspiring to Lead is working pretty well over in Southeast Asia. People have the coaching um, content on their phone. It could be the grow model, it could be, you know, situational leadership model. And they're, they're looking at that five minutes before the conversation that they need to have. So again, it's performance support. Is it learning? Mm, but it is supporting their performance. And um, I think we all know when we create workbooks and we're really proud of them, um, people come to these workshops and training courses and then they put them on the shelf and they seldom refer to them again. So again, how can we get some of that good content onto people's phones so it's far more readily accessible? And then the other thing is, is speed. So speed um, to develop and speed to deploy. So in, in the old days, and, and I'm sure you folks, so I'm gonna actually even go back even, even longer. So I had a job at Inland Revenue about 20 odd years ago, creating, we used to call it CBT in those days. So who's heard, who's heard of CBT, computer, oh, there you go, nice. Thank you for showing your age, people. <laughs> in those days, I had to code a frame around the, the, you know, the window, around the screen. It used to take months to create a module, like months, it's insane, right? So now clients won't accept that anymore. So if it's gonna be micro, it has to be rapid. So we need to be able to build things extremely quickly. It could be, uh, speed could be that the client wants to take this tool and run with it and create a, a, a five minute comms thing, whatever that might be. New Zealand Post um, used this the other day, took some um, video images of their leaders dressed up in funky 80s clothes, doing some exercises. So it was kind of engaging and, and fun. And they were able to push that out within days. So speed of access is pretty important. Now, that's not to say that embarking on mobile learning doesn't have its challenges. So one of the challenges um, that, uh, this is from ATD, uh, 2018. So first of all, budget. Now, this is a very big bucket. I know the budget to create mobile learning shouldn't be any bigger than budget to create any, any other forms of digital learning. Integration with legacy LMS is a challenge, and, and that's something that we're experiencing right now. Um, security can be or not, it depends. It depends. Um, IT infrastructure to support. I believe if you already have a mobility suite and you've equipped your learners or essentially your workers with those devices and that mobility, you can piggyback on that. So the in infrastructure and the IT infrastructure to support that is actually already in place. And then there's legal or policy concerns, which, which for us, we haven't really experienced too much of that at the moment. But it's, you know, where, where are you doing this and is anyone going to lean over your shoulder and, and check out the, I don't know, the info security module, which I think is less of a concern. Move on. I'm going to give you guys some examples of, of what we've created just, to, just so you can sort of see what we've actually done around this space. So the first one is Squiz. 
So Squiz are an um, IT company um, and based in Melbourne. So what we've done with Squizzo over the years, and now they pretty much run with learning themselves. And I think Anna from Squiz created 60 unique items of learning, whether they be modules or comms, in, in a two-month period. So she got pretty busy, right? Now the question might be, is she spamming her audience? Possibly she is, but I'll just give you some idea in terms of um, how easy it is to create content and what you can do. So let's just have a quick look here and I'll show you another example. So this was essentially about sort of workplace behavior and, and some bias that might enter into the workplace. We always start with the why. I'm just gonna quickly flip through. And then we get into Cameron. So this is um, Cameron Poe. So I don't know if anyone can recognize any movies, Ben. Is that sort of, no? Ring any bells? Okay. Maybe that's a little quiz for later, right? So, and, and again, using the language of Squiz. Cameron Poe's in himself today in a meeting. You see him acting like a bit of a dickhead. It's Australia, right? <coughs> After being challenged on deliverable, he made a discriminatory comment to someone on the team. You know that Cameron's behavior isn't how we roll at Squiz, but you've worked with Cameron for a couple of years now and his behavior isn't normal. Maybe Cameron, had, Cameron has some stuff going on. Maybe, right? So what do we do? So what do you think we should do, guys? Let him hulk out, like get real angry, pipe him. I don't even know what that means, but it means something to Squiz. Uh, <laughs> immediately tell him to stop or check with him after the meeting. What do you think? Check in after the meet. Let's check it out. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Could be really bad, right? Yeah. Great, great idea. Cameron needs to know that his behaviour wasn't cool, and taking a moment to check in with him is going to be more effective. So yeah. So again, completely um, device independent, PC, mobile, tablet, any browser. Let's have a look at another one. So VMIA, so again, this is really um, less learning and more comms. So this is telling some good folks at VMIA about the capability of performance and learning at VMIA. Now I'm not gonna go through in too much detail, but again, you start to see that there's, um, there's some interactions that we create within Chameleon, our authoring tool, that work well on the PC, but work really, really well on the mobile. So I'll send you guys some links to these. So these interactions here, they stack, so they're three way that way, but on the mobile, it's more of a vertical thing. I just sort of show you a little bit about what we're talking about. So what have we got coming up in the future? Because I think that's always important to, uh, to explore, and we're gonna have a bit of QA after this. So I think the most exciting thing is Harp, which sounds cool, right? It's like from the Avengers movie. So hosting, analytics, and reporting platform. So first of all, hosting. So for those organizations that do not want or can't have this stuff hosted within their firewall, we'll do it for you. We'll do it for them. And also those organizations that want to detour around the LMS just for now, we'll do it for them. A developer community, so the ability for developers to start sharing their content with each other as much as as much as they can. But I think you know, you know there's a real challenge and, and we've experienced this over many, many years, where developers and organizations, they don't know if their stuff's cool or not, or they want to share it with other people and they want to get some ideas outside of their organization. So we thought clients are asking for this, they seem to think it's a great idea, so the ability to share that. And lastly, before we get into some questions, is analytics. Now the analytics, yes, analytics around the learning and the typical, what you know, SCORM or Tin Can X API would give you. However, the analytics, um, we're going a little bit deeper because we've always been really curious, and so have our clients, what part of the module are people engaging with? How long are they spending on certain things? Are they hovering over this or are they clicking on this? So analytics that go that bit deeper. And again, taking the analytics that we find from the marketing world, from say LinkedIn or Facebook, and using those analytics in a digital learning environment. So again, stealing like an artist and bringing that from, that's not from our vertical back into here around the analytics. And to me, I think that's the most exciting aspect of Harp. So hosting and reporting, that's great. And there's many, many things that could do this. I find the analytics is something that's, that's a little bit more unique. 
Okay, so that's me. Um, thank you. Thank you for um, listening.